In this video, I'm going to talk about the three different kinds of plywood. It gets complicated for most people. They think that there's all these different kinds of plywood, but actually you can break it down into three major groups. So I'm going to talk you guys through that today. But more than that, I'm going to talk to you a bit about the grades of plywood and like how you understand the different kinds of plywood. Most people, when they go to a place that sells plywood, they're a little bit like a comedian on a smarty box. You don't quite know which way to go, what to do, how to behave what questions to ask, and I'm going to try and answer those questions for you. We're going to make it real simple. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Oh. Right, so there are basically three kinds of plywood. There is, if we break it down into three simple categories, there's marine plywood, there's pine plywood, and there's birch plywood. If you want to know more about how to break down plywood in terms of the grades of plywood, then let's get into it. And again, let's try and keep it as simple as possible. There's too much complicated stuff out there about grading plywoods. There's the A grade, B grade, C grade, D, oh, this gets crazy. Let's just make it real simple. There are letters that describe the quality of plywood. Mostly it starts with B, B for best. That's the easiest way to remember it. So B for best, B grade plywood is very, very good. Then you get BB, which is almost as good, but not quite. Then you get C and BC and CC and so on. What it basically means is that if you have something that is B grade on one side and B, B grade on the other side, then it means that one face is better than the other. So we call that sexy face, we call it the show face. That's, the show, that's like the one that people see. If your show face is B and the back is B, B, that's cool. If your show face is B and the back is never going to be seen and it's never going to be visible and you don't really care what it looks like, then it may as well be C grade. So, you just have to pick the best plywood for your application. Simple as that. Okay, let's start with the basics. Let's start with pine ply. Let's just clear up one misconception that in, that's in the markets, that people think that you can get pine ply that is marine ply. It's, there is no such thing. It's easier to find rocking horse manure than what it is to find pine ply that's marine ply. It's not possible. Can't be done. Okay? So, pine ply is made out of pine, layers of pine, pine trees. You know those things like the Christmas ones? Those ones. Okay. <laughs> So what we've got here is we've got pine ply, and this particular piece is what we call BB grade. So B on one side, B on the other side. B for best, B for best. Okay, so this is pretty good stuff. It means you can use it for something where you're going to see both sides. So if you're going to make something where you can see both sides of it, hey, this is the stuff for you. Bonus about this stuff is that it isn't hell of an expensive. It's actually quite good value. So it's got mass, it's got layers, it's made out of pine, it's good both sides. What more could you want? If you don't care as much about what the other side looks like, then you're looking at something like this, which is B one side, C on the other side. It's good on one side, and it's eh, it's okay on the other side. Nothing wrong with it. It just might have a blemish, or it might have a knot, or some other thing. And sometimes that's cool, because you don't need to show both sides of something. If it's the back of a cabinet, and the cabinet is facing the wall, then what do you care what the back looks like? I mean, why spend the extra money? Spend money on tools or fun stuff, like, I don't know, tools. When you go into a place that sells plywood and you talk to people about plywood and they start talking to you in a language that you don't understand, like you can see that they're talking to you because their lips are moving and they're looking at you, but you've got no idea what they're saying because they're talking to you in a language you've just never heard. And they're talking about things like WBP and all of that other stuff about waterproof glues and layers and veneers and all that stuff. Just stop in your tracks. Just relax. It's okay. Let me just make it real simple for you guys. The idea with plywood is that, in essence, there's three simple rules that I follow, okay? You get what you pay for. You spend more, you get better stuff. Simple as that. Number two, it depends what you want to use the plywood for because if you buy the right plywood for the right application, you end up saving money because you don't have to do things twice. And number three, all you've got to find out in the most basic way possible is, is this stuff put together with waterproof glue. If it's got a waterproof glue, then it's better than stuff that hasn't got a waterproof glue. In other words, you can use it for an outside application or something where the variance in the temperature or the humidity is going to be crazy. Like Durban, like, you know when your sweat sweats in Durban and it gets so hot that you can hardly stand it? Maybe you want to think about something that's got like an actual waterproof glue because, let's face it, you don't want things to bend all over the place once you've put it together. I mean, that's not the point of why you're making anything. So you go into the plywood place and you say, I'm looking for a piece of plywood that does this. 
like we said before, there's three basic categories. There's pine ply, there's marine ply, and then there is um, birch ply. Right. Pine ply we've covered because we know that there's different grades of pine ply and you get them in different thicknesses. Speaking of which, think about the fact that you can get plywood in virtually just about any thickness. That ranges from sometimes as little as four mils to as much as 50 mils. All you've got to do is ask. Go to the people who are running the place and say, hey, what's the thickest ply you have? Don't just assume that it only comes in, you know, you watch American TV and it's half inch, quarter inch, and like that's the end of it. It's not. You can get plywood in just about any thickness you like. And here's the bonus part about pliers. If it's not thick enough, guess what you can do? You can glue them together and make your own ply. So that's virtually limitless what you can do with ply. So let's talk about marine ply for a second. Remember earlier I was talking about something called WBP. Now, what is that? I mean, what does it even stand for? It stands for water boiling point. I had to ask, trust me, it's like I didn't even know what it was. But it turns out that what it is, it's a point at which the wood actually delaminates. In other words, it starts pulling apart. So this stuff is pretty well tested. Now these mega factories that put this stuff together, these guys, they've put billions of rands into research, dollars, billions of dollars into R&D, research, and what have you. And these guys spend a lot of time trying to work out the best way to make plywoods that suit their customers. The technology behind this stuff is pretty amazing. I mean, you must see how this stuff gets made. It's crazy. But the, the idea here is that the, the, the plywood is rated, and sometimes you see on the side of it that it's written WBP, which basically means that it's marine-grade glue, it's waterproof glue, it's better for outside uses. So just keep an eye out for that sort of thing and think about what you want to use plywood for. Again, there's no point in overspending on something that you don't need to spend money on, but also if you're going to do something, rather buy the right product and then you're, done going to have, you're not going to have a disappointing outcome. Right, so let's talk about marine grades just for a second. So this is marine grade plywood. Um, again, it's got waterproof glue in between the layers. It's got two very, very good faces. And if you ask for it, this is what you're going to get. You're not going to get a pine marine ply because it doesn't exist. You're going to get something that's got a hardwood face, another hardwood face, and a whole lot of good stuff in between. Speaking of the good stuff in between, it's actually quite a good thing to talk about because people don't know what is in between plywoods. There's a lot of stuff in between you, and sometimes you can get the biggest load of rubbish in between plywoods. And some of the things to look out for is on your inferior grades of plywood, your really cheap stuff, you'll find that sometimes you get voids and you'll see that there are little holes in between layers, and you don't want that because you want your stuff to be consistent. And the quality of the wood between the layers dictates how that wood behaves. So if your quality of the wood between your layers is poor or soft wood or badly treated wood or badly dried wood, then what happens is that your plywood starts bending. Now, sometimes you see plywood that looks like a banana, and that's because the stuff inside is dried at different rates to the stuff that's on the outside, and all kinds of bad things happen. So again, it just comes down to quality. You get what you pay for. Simple as that. Okay, so that's marine grade ply. All right, so now the, the big question is, what do you use this stuff for? I mean, it's got waterproof qualities, so where would you use it? Well, it's most commonly used for things like boat building. It's used for um, roofing construction. It's used for outside furniture. It's used for stuff that's going to be outside, stuff that's going to need to be able to behave well in extreme weather conditions. In areas where the humidity fluctuates a lot, it's a good idea to use anything with a water, waterproof glue of some kind. So this stuff has, has, has definitely got its place um, uh, in the market. So if you're looking for that sort of thing, then hey, consider this one. Right, now we're going to move on to birch ply. Birch plywood is it's a bit of a rock star in terms of the worlds of plywood or in the world of plywood because it's got a, it's got a reputation for quality. But you've got to be a little bit careful because Birch plywood um, has become a category name rather than an actual name. So you get birch that is made out of actual birch, and then you get birch that's got a whole lot of other stuff, and it's sort of masquerading as birch. So you've got to be a bit careful. You get birch made in China, which is not the same quality as birch made in the Baltic Islands, or Baltic birch, or Russian birch, or you know, some of the other birches out there. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Um, you've got to compare apples with apples and make sure that you're actually getting what you pay for. Ask if you can, and the people that are selling you the stuff should know the answer. 
they should be able to tell you exactly what the origin of their birch ply is because it's important for you to know that you're paying for quality. This stuff is not cheap. You may as well get the good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the qualities of birch ply itself. Obviously, by virtue of the fact that it's called birch ply, one can assume that it has a certain quality. But within birch ply, there are grades just like every other plywood. So SBB is a grade that is the top of the pops. It's the best one you can buy. So SBB is furniture grade ply. It's great on both sides. It sands well. It's incredibly stable. And that's quite a big deal that it's stable, especially for furniture. It's kind of a big deal that it is stable. So it's stable. It sands well. It absorbs finish well. You can do cool stuff with it. You can shape it. You can router it. You can do amazing things with it. So in that essence, it's as good in many instances as a solid wood, but it has the advantage of being stable. Now, solid wood, as you may or may not know, moves back and forth. It bends all over the place, especially naughty woods like oak. Oak is like a teenager. You can't, doesn't do what you want it to do. It'll do what it wants to do and not what you tell it. So it's beautiful, but it's not very, very stable. Whereas this stuff is um, it's, it's more like a mature adult, if we put it in those terms. So this stuff here is good, it's stable, it's easy to work with, and its strength to weight ratio is off the charts. So it's super strong. The next grade down is Two Faces BB. So in other words, it's not SBB, it's BB one side and BB the other side. It is just one grade down. So it's still just about the best stuff you can find. So you know, when you're dealing with stuff of this quality, it makes everything you do a lot easier. It cuts better, it machines well, it takes finish, you can sand it and, and, and. So there's lots of good reasons to buy decent birch, but whenever you are buying birch, ask the critical question, ask the important question, where does it come from? Has this stuff got waterproof glue in it? What is the glue about? I mean, ask all of those sorts of questions and establish that what you're paying for is exactly what you think you're paying for, okay? Because there are a lot of people out there who might try and sell you something called birch when in fact it's not that great. So you've got to just be a little bit careful. If your heart's set on using birch ply and budget is a consideration, then there is an option for you. So you can get something called BB on one side and WG on the other, which is basically furniture grade on one side and industrial grade on the other. So if the second side or the other face is not as important, then you can get the same quality and the same strength out of a piece of birch ply for a lot less money. So it's a very smart option. Here is a plywood called Akumi ply. Now, Akumi is another hardwood. It's got a very um, interesting color layer. It's got a sort of a, te uh, not a te texture, it's got a, it's got a very smooth color layer. Now, why would you want plywood with a hardwood art layer? It's because let's say you wanted to match, you're doing panels and you want to match a different wood. Let's say you're matching Maranti as a hardwood or any kind of hardwood that looks like this. It obviously makes a lot more sense to use a plywood as a panel because it's much more stable. And secondly, it's cool because you don't have to spend time color matching stuff and staining things. And if you're using woods that are similar to this, um, like let's say Maranti or Seligna or one of those sorts of species, then it makes life a lot easier for you as a, as a maker to not have to deal with color variances. So this stuff is actually also very, very cool. Um, it's nice and light. It's very, very solid. And I think in terms of using it for, for furniture grade products, it's a, it's a pretty cool product, um, especially since I don't have to now go to the trouble of staining it to match it to something. So that's the big advantage for me is that this stuff you can use in a way that um, will save you time. And sometimes saving time is quite a big thing. I mean, I'd rather be down at the pub drinking a beer than staining pot, staining, staining ply. It's, it's a no-brainer. Okay, last one here. Uh, let's talk about this stuff. This is called lightwood. And it's called lightwood because it is light. It actually weighs a hell of a lot less than you might think. It feels like it's all made out of a very, very light wood. But very heavily compacted, and its strength-to-weight ratio is off the charts good. Okay, so... Here's an application, maybe, or here's a, a product that maybe the application for is where you need to worry about weight. So if you're doing big doors and you're doing the panels in those doors and you don't want the door to weigh so much that it tears the hinges out of the carcass, then maybe this is something to consider because it's lightweight, it's very solid, it's very stable, um, and it behaves quite well. So again, just kind of goes back to the original point of plywood, is that plywood can be whatever you want it to be. 
as long as you remember the key things about plywood. Number one, make sure you get what you pay for. Number two, think about the right plywood for your application. Make sure that you're getting the right stuff for what you want it to do. If all of this stuff is confusing you guys, and I mean, to be honest, this isn't easy to absorb in one small session, but if all of this stuff is confusing to you guys, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. We'll try and answer your questions. Um, we welcome your comments, we welcome your questions, and let's see if we can help you guys be better buyers of plywood. Because the better, the better you are at this stuff, the easier your project will be. And the last thing we want is for you to have a frustrating time being a maker. These products are meant to make your life easier. They're meant to make your life simpler, they're meant to make your life more efficient, and what have you. This is why plywood exists. It doesn't exist for any other reason than to make making more simple, okay? So ask us your questions. We'll try and answer them in the comment section below. Pop by if you guys enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe, it'll be cool. We wouldn't mind seeing you guys back here. It gets awfully lonely out here without you, so make an effort and come back, okay? Um, and then, yeah, let's see you guys around in the next video. Oh. Hmm. Uh-oh. <sighs>